uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, participants are requested to note that we will wait for more five ten minutes as other participants are still joining the webinar. So I will request you all to please wait till then. We'll start the webinar in five to ten minutes. Thank you. Hi guys, participants are requested to note that we'll start the webinar in 5 to 10 minutes as we are expecting more participants to join. I repeat, we'll start the webinar in more 5 to 10 minutes as we are expecting more participants to join the webinar. Thanks for your patience guys, thank you.
guys uh, as we are waiting for other participants to join the webinar uh, you can do one thing you can get your ai 102 learning achievement badge redeem till then uh, i have shared the steps and url for the badge in the chat window so you can get from uh, you can get this batch activated so simply you have to follow the steps to get your batch activated as you can see over here you just have to go on microsoft learn the link has been mentioned with the steps after that you have to sign in to create an account on microsoft learn if you don't have any account once you create the account, you just have to click on the URL which has been given to you all in the chat box with the steps. As soon as you clicked on the redeem button, the code will get activated. And batch will reflect in your achievements as you can see over here. So make sure you get, follow the steps and get your batch activated. Also, if you face any problem uh, related to it, you can just put your questions or queries in the chat box so I can help you out with the same. Uh, I'm sharing the link again in the chat box. Those who have not received any link in the chat box. Just a minute. Hello. Hello. Ha, sir, screen share Karun Teva Namala. They join Karel Nai Deta. Team Sat. Hello. Hello.
Very good evening to all of you. So the coordinator will be joining in one or two minutes. So she has some problem with uh, the team to log in into this team. So once she will come into the meeting and she will announce few things, then the session is going to start. Uh, hello, Navjoti sir. Yes, uh, Manish. Is there is some issue with Chaitali teams actually. Okay. Uh, she not able to connect uh, teams. Uh, give me okay, two fine. minutes. She will be working. So it's checking. Yeah, okay. yeah, fine. So that's what I'm okay. already. Yes, explain, yes. Explain and explain to the participants. So just hang on there for a couple of minutes. So she will okay. be back soon. Uh, hello, Navjoti, sir. Yes. Uh, you can proceed with your session because uh, Chaitali has some issue with her machine. So she is not able to connect teams uh, actually. So uh, she will be joining in uh, some times. She'll take um, some more uh, time actually. So you can uh, start the session. Uh, we will. OK. OK, thank you, Mani. So let me start. So. <clears throat> so okay. if Satali come in between, so she can announce whatever she want to announce uh, in between yes. the session. No problem. OK, yes, yes, yes. OK. Ask her. So once again, uh, a very good evening to all of you. Uh, So let me set the context uh, for this today's session, what we are going to do. So as you can see on the screen, I hope everybody can see the screen and hope everybody can hear me as well. Now today's session is all about designing and implementing Microsoft Azure Open AI solutions. Now you must be went through Few, few few uh, kind of uh, 
webinar in the past few days. You may have been learning different concept and different topic from the open AI or chat GPT point of views. But today's session is all around how that open AI is being implemented on Microsoft Azure as a services. This is what we are going to discuss. What is there from the Microsoft Azure to take the advantage of the open AI capabilities? So this is what we would be discussing uh, in today's session, in today's webinar. Now let me introduce myself. My name is Nabjoti Baru. I work as an AVP technology at Synergetics. I'm also an MCT Microsoft certified trainer. And I have been uh, currently um, associated with um, customers for uh, solution designing and architecting on using Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. So as I said, uh, this is a different topic altogether. So here also we would be talking about more onto the solutions. So what kind of solutions the OpenAI service can bring into the table. But primarily what we are going to discuss. So our primary platform, the cloud platform is Microsoft Azure the Microsoft Cloud Platform that is Azure. And of course, the OpenAI would be the service up from the platform and how we can make use of OpenAI to build different kind of solutions and they use, you know, uh, address to a different problem statement uh, within our organization. So this is the moot point. This is the moot uh, kind of uh, objective uh, that we are going to discuss and we are going to explore uh, from this webinar. Now, let me take you through a quick agenda. So what we are going to do during this session. So first, we'll go and in look into the AI services on Microsoft Azure. You may have learned in the past, as I said, you have been attending different sessions uh, but yes, uh, we must understand what is the AI ecosystem from the Microsoft Azure. So where the AI is started and you know where they are at this moment. So this is what we are going to look at first. The AI ecosystems uh, from the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. That is number one. Then we are going to primarily focus on a service called Azure OpenAI services. Now concept of an OpenAI or ChatGPT is not something new that we are going to talk about today, but how Microsoft has taken the advantage of, as I said, the capabilities of the OpenAI and create a product from the Microsoft Azure and that product is all about service and we are looking we we are going to explore that services so that is all about azure open ai service now as i said before also this is just a service but you know how that service is going to help us to build different solutions to address different problem in customers the workspaces or in customer business that is also we are going to discuss during this uh, session. And then, as I said, the use cases also, you should be able to map that technology like, OK, this is the technology in real life, how that technology is going to help us. So what are the use cases? And uh, this technology is going to be more relevant into like, you know, so this is what we are going to discuss and we'll end this session with uh, a Q&A. So if you have any questions, so you can definitely ask questions once the presentation is done. Uh, but 
if you think that you know you need to ask the questions in between during the session, still you can go and ask, not a problem. So you can put your questions into the teams. Uh, OK, so. You can always put your question in the team, so I'll be responding to these questions time to time. OK, then let's get started with this. Now, if you. Look into the. AI as a whole artificial intelligence, and that started sometime 1956, as you can see. Then the first pillar of the artificial intelligence called machine learning. We all of us know that all AI is being driven by the machine learning ML. So when you talk about machine learning, it's all about data. It's all about statistical analysis. It's all about algorithms. It's all about training data. It's all about models and so on and so forth. But yes. The machine learning was always been a backbone for the artificial intelligence product. So whatever the product or the services that we see today, which is completely backed by the machine learning. This is the fundamental concept and it was introduced long back in 1997. Then. Extending the capability of the machine learning by having a deep learning. Sometimes the machine learning is not capable of solving problem that we want to solve for our business. Then we get into the deep learning, which is basically the advanced machine learning. So it may be the capability of learning from the data would be more than the typical machine learning by having you know, advanced algorithms by implementing advanced algorithms in that space of the deep learning. And finally, today we talk about something called generative AIs, which is basically in a form of open AI, what we discussed today. So today in AI field, so we are in the generative AI. So where we can create a new visuals. We can ask questions using natural languages. We can do many things. You know by using generative AI. What uh, we are going to go and discuss today and as I said, you have been discussing. We have been discussing in different session altogether, but uh, this session is primarily going to focus on Microsoft Azure. Uh, cloud platforms and the open AI capabilities and how we can take advantage of an open AI capabilities from the Microsoft Azure cloud platform. That would be the moot point for this today's session. Now, there are a lot of discussions, a lot of, uh, you know, um, the blogs and technical uh, articles is being published in different forum altogether. People have been discussing. So what is new in the field of AI? People talks about most of the time the open AI and the respective models. Which is basically uh, behind the open AI to produce uh, the capability of what we are experiencing today. So these are the different term people have been using so far. In fact, as I said, as I keep on saying, you may be familiar with those terms like chat GPTs, open AI or dull AE and so on and so forth. But yes, the talk of the time is all about 
open AI and their capabilities and people are trying to understand how that capability can be used in their business from their workload, what they have been doing or how they can enhance the AI capabilities of their existing implement application by using uh, the open AI capabilities. And this is what I think everywhere uh, people have been talking about. But when you go back to uh, real implementations, when you think of go and implement, then you need to focus on a set of services that we can easily consume from our application. You know, so that is something that we need to always look for. And this is this is where we would be talking about a platform that already we know. The Microsoft Azure, we have already use a whole lot of services from the Microsoft Azure cloud platform. Now we are going to see a new service. Which is related to the open AI, what we have been discussing or people have been discussing everywhere. So we'll go and get a one point contact. That is our Microsoft Azure and take the advantage of the services who can offer the capability of the open AI. And we consume from our application to enhance the AI capabilities back in my application. Or we can start thinking about the innovations from our applications using the open AI as a service from Microsoft Azure. And this is where we would be talking about how Microsoft and the open AI has come together. Though we all of us know the open AI is an independent vendors, you know, people are. Doing a lot of research and R&D stuff in the open AI. But in the meantime, what happened? The Microsoft has formed a partnership with the open AI to collaborate on the development of artificial intelligence technologies. The partnership is going to aim to accelerate the development of advanced AI system and bring the benefit of AI to more people, to the human mankind. As a part of the partnership, Microsoft and OpenAI have agreed to work together on few key areas like Developing AI technologies. The two companies will collaborate on the development of new AI models and algorithm. With a focus on the natural language processing. Computer visions and other area of the AI like the cognitive services. The another area they have identified is building an AI computing platform. So Microsoft and OpenAI will work together to build a new AI computing platform that will allow the developer to easily access. And use advanced AI model and the algorithm. That's the point what Microsoft is trying to make it. Because Microsoft has the robust platform already. So getting a new service on the Microsoft platform and made available to the customer would be the easiest one. And for the customer also, it would be more convenient to go and make use of an open AI from the Microsoft Cloud platform. And in context of R&D, the two companies will also collaborate on the range of R&D project aimed to advancing the state of art in AI because it's a continuous process. It's just the beginning. That's what they are saying that they're saying together. And again, they are trying to make another point that making the AI more accessible. To a wider range of developers and organizations in order to bring them benefit of AI. As a whole. 
So Microsoft already announced it will use OpenAI GPT technologies to add more capability to the product. Such as Microsoft has like Cortana or a Power Visual Agent or Dynamic 365 and so on and so forth. So they are going to seamlessly work together with from those products with the capability coming from the open AI. Additionally, Microsoft has also made an investment in open AI, allowing the company to use Microsoft Azure as a preferred cloud platform and allowing the open AI to tap into the vast resource of Microsoft to accelerate its R&D uh, process, R&D operation. This partnership gives the open AI the ability to scale their models and the service on Azure and make them more widely available to the customers. Because we know that Azure has the data center across the globe and they can really go and make those services available in those regions to make those services near to the customers. So overall partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI aim to accelerate the development and use of the advanced AI technologies. That's the primary focus. And making AI more accessible to the developer and the organizations in order to bring. The benefit of the AI. To everyone. So that's the mood point here on what's the Microsoft and OpenAI is going to work together. And the same time we know that when we have learned about the. Open AI. The open AI is what it is all about set of. You know. Models and those model is going to be used by the underlying services to get the capability back in your application. So these are the model as you can see, and it is grouped by a family and capabilities. The model family typically associate the model by their intended task, what they are trying to solve in a business use cases like GPT-4, what is trying to do. So GPT-4 is a set of model that improve on G GPT-3.5 and can understand as well as generate the natural language and the code. So we are going to go and see the example of the GPT-4 from the Microsoft Azure Cloud point of views. I have been telling that you may have seen the example by calling API to get the capability from a Python application or from a .NET application directly from the open AI. But to date, the context is different. The same capability is being offered by Microsoft by creating a service that the customer can go and consume that service, the open AI service as your open AI service. That is what, but eventually it would be backed by the model that we have been discussing in traditional open AI session also. Like GPT-3 is a series of model that can understand and generate the natural language as well as the GPT-4. DALE is a series of model that can generate the original image from the natural languages. So you can talk to uh, the AI application for creating an image by using the DALE model. Codex is a series of model that can understand and generate the code, including translating the natural language to the code. So I can type by asking to generate a code with my own language. So your application will understood and application will go back and produce the code. The language that you want the code also need to be mentioned 
in the uh, in your natural language nl the last one is the embedding it's it's is a set of model that can be uh, understand and use the kind of embedding so an embedding is a special format of data representations that can be easily utilized by the machine learning model and the algorithms and then embedding is an information a dense representations of a semantic meaning of a piece of text so currently microsoft offer three families of embedding model for different functionalities like similarity text search or a code search or something like that a three one so what we are looking at at this moment for all the customers who have been using microsoft azure so far and they are quickly go and enroll themselves for the open ai capability by identifying a service from the microsoft azure that is the point the moot point that we are discussing so you don't need to go and learn different environment altogether because you are already familiar with microsoft azure you have been using different uh, in fact, the AI related service from the Microsoft Azure, like cognitive services, computer vision, custom vision, NLPs. So you have already using those services from the Microsoft Azure. So you are extending uh, your uh, capabilities uh, by just uh, subscribing to a, another services that is as your open ai service now the as i said this as your open ai service is all about the generative ai content created by the ai which is backed by an api so it's like okay you have to make an a call to an api and api will go and implement a model on the data that you have sent across and you are going to get the response. So what is your prompt? What you are asking to an AI applications? Write a tagline for an ice cream So This is what the response will come from an AI application. So back of the AI application, what it does. So AI application will make a call to an API. An API will be using a respective model on the data and come back with the response. Right. So, so what is basically the advanced uh, AI implementation concept is going on for some time? It's a new technology, it's a new concept, is a new model. But what collectively they are trying to do they are trying to step into every things that we do in a day-to-day -day life that we can enhance our efficiency by implementing the ai capabilities rather than doing everything on our own so writing a code it's a kind of thought process. We have no clue what should be a punch line for my business. So I can go and ask my AI. The AI is going to give it. So it means the AI is going to touch every day's life. Everyone's life. It doesn't matter what they do, but they can always take the help of AI. For those day to day activity they have been doing. <laughs> Whether in a field of business or an education or any any business verticals, the AI is going to step in and help them out to enhance the productivity and efficiency, people at work. That's the whole motive. I mean, like generative AI is talking about the new era under the uh, under the banner of the AI, what we have been discussing so far. Now, as I said, AI is not something new concept for all of us. If you are a Microsoft cloud consumer, if you are an AI developers, you may be 
consuming whole lot of service from the Microsoft Azure under the umbrella of the artificial intelligence. As I say, it, it could be a machine learning service as your machine learning. It could be an Azure cognitive service in different categories like in a category of languages, in a category of text, in a category of videos, in a category of images. You know, you have come across those services. So now you're looking at a new kind of, uh, you know, capabilities and a new services. So as a cloud consumer, as a Microsoft Azure consumer for you, it won't be a, a new because if you go by the capability and that is new, but as a consumer, what are you supposed to do in order to consume and enhance uh, a, a comp from your applications won't be new. Because it would be again a consistent programming model that you are going to see with a set of some SDK with the help of that you can make use of open AI from your application that you have developed using uh, one of the languages like Python and C sharp. So this deck, the slide deck that I'm presenting in front of you is trying to tell you by few example of how Azure OpenAI service allow you to generate content using the API, what I'm referring to. You can build prompts that ask it to generate the text, database queries or images. So now where the real magic can happen, when you customize as your open AI with the business data, because this is something what is already being trained, what is already being learned by the model and model is being used to implement this kind of things. But what about if they have to talk about your own on 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 your own business data within your business context, then you need to go and customize, you know, those APIs that you have been calling to get those stuff as a ready-made one. Yeah. So now when you talk about the ecosystem, as I said, on the Microsoft Azure, so where the AI can reach. I mean, what are the things the AI can uh, be uh, incorporated like? AI can be used. The application point of view is Microsoft 365, Microsoft Dynamic 365, or maybe some kind of partner solutions. Application platform, as you can see, And of course, there are few services like bot, cognitives, from recognizer, a video indexer, matrix advisor. OK, so these are the service already available to incorporate a lot of AI capabilities in our application, the AI application, customizable AI model like vision. So what you call as custom vision or maybe speech or a language by creating some kind of uh, intense or maybe some kind of utterance in context of NLP, the language context, or creating some kind of QA, the knowledge base using the language related services. You can completely customize to your own domain. Decision making, the kind of anomaly detectors, so you can take a decisions based on the data, based on the threshold. And finally, so the the focus where we will be giving is the open AI service. So as your open AI service, that is what we are going to go and. And as I said, this everything that we do in the space of AI is being backed by the machine learning. 
So ML is sitting out there as your machine learning. Right, so we make a call as an API, but behind the scene. Who does this job of giving me the response that I'm looking for? It's all about machine learning because we know that machine learning is a technology who can learn from the data on their own. And that can be applied to the upcoming data if they have to predict, if they have to analyze. They can do it on their own without human uh, kind of uh, help. So when you go after the Azure OpenAI service, what we have been discussing with back by all this model that we discussed, whether it is DALE or Codex or a GPTs and so on and so forth. So the first thing you would be deploying the Azure OpenAI service. Under your Azure subscription. So it's going to be a large pre-trained AI model to unlock the new scenarios by implementing as your AI service, as your open AI service. You can always build a custom AI model to fine tune with your data and the, you know, hyper parameters. Built in responsible AI to detect and mitigate the harmful uses. You can't do everything that you want to do from the Microsoft Azure because you become a responsible AI developer. Because developing an AI solutions need to be responsible because uh, we talk about different six different parameters under the responsible uh, AI because this is something that uh, we cannot forget when you develop AI solutions because AI solutions cannot uh, harm uh, the business or cannot harm people, cannot discriminate the people, cannot take a BIOS decisions. You know, all those things are part of the responsible AI. So Microsoft Azure is going to ensure that you come under the boundary of responsible AI development environment and you start developing solutions uh, for the different business scenarios. The last point what Microsoft Azure is talking about along with the Azure OpenAI service is an enterprise grade securities. So we know that Microsoft Azure has an identity platforms where we can join as an user and we can be assigned a particular role and the permissions for that particular role, what you can do and what you cannot do. So it's a robust system altogether. It is not just, you know, making a call to an API and getting an output. There are other relevant robustness is required when you think of developing enterprise application. Now, for example, I'm just giving an example. So if we're making a call to an API, to make a call to an API, you need a keys. Now the question is that where I'm going to keep that keys. So keeping the key in an application is not a good idea. Because if I keep the key to make a call to an API in application, anybody can get access to the raw key and anybody can build any things and use the API using the same key. So if I want to completely remove the raw key from my application developer, then we need to go back to another service from the Microsoft Azure called Azure Key Vault. And we can keep our key inside the key vault to secure our key. 
that applications who wants to make a call an API, it will go and get the key from the key wall. But while I'm going and asking for a key, there would be a lot of authentication and authorizations and permissions and policy is going to come on your way. So that's how the solution become robust. That's how the underlying the service will make your AI solution more robust because it's all about enterprise. It's not a kind of B2C every time. It could be B2B. So when you talk about an enterprise AI applications, they need to undergo a lot of audits, compliance, and governance, what we usually call it. So how we are going to put all of them together to develop a solutions, including all the prerequisites from the compliance and governments, from the policy point of views, you know, all these things together from the security point of view for authorizations and authentication point of views. So we need to look into everything. It's not just going and making a call to an API and getting a result out of an API by using a key. So as your OpenAI service is going to provide a REST API access to an OpenAI powerful language model, including the GPT, Codex, Embedding in the model series. In addition, you are going to look into the set, uh, you are going to look into the new GPT-4 and the GPT-3.5 Turbo model series have already been made available behind the Azure OpenAI services. So this model can be easily adapted to your specific task, including but not limited to content generations or summarizations or semantic search or maybe natural language to code translations and so on and so forth. User can access the service through the REST API or maybe from the Python SDK or from the C Sharp SDK or the web-based interface in Azure OpenAI Studio. We are going to go and explore all of them practically how we can make use of Azure OpenAI as a service in some time from now. So you are going to explore the limitless generations with an, uh, you know, with a new, uh, with a few lines of inputs. So you do less and get more. That's the whole idea when you look into the open AI service on Microsoft Azure. So we have been talking about those capabilities like under the banner of content generations, under the banner of summarizations, under the banner of code generations, and under the banner of semantic search. These are the different categories and what possibly we can do. As you can see, this is mainly the self descriptive. I don't have to explain that. You have already seen that in an example in the past few uh, sessions, but yes. So whatever I'm talking today in context of Microsoft Azure, not as an open AI point of views, not as an chat GPT point of views as a product that you are exploring uh, till now. So now onwards, we are looking at how Microsoft Azure can adopt that capability, what we have been discussing so far openly by just making a call to an API from our application. We don't need to look into the infrastructure where it is getting deployed. We don't need to look into the management over it, the, how this is going to be managed, how this is going to be protected, and so on and so forth. So these are example of uh, multiple model use cases that you can see end-to-end -end call center analy analytics, classifications, 
sentiment, entity extraction, summarizations, and email generations, and so on and so forth. The customer 360 degree hyper personalizations using timely summarizations of customer queries and trend and users and content generations. I think the limit list, that's what they are talking about, the capabilities, what we are talking about. But out of those capabilities, we are putting them under the four capabilities and the use cases. It belongs to the content generation, summarization, code generations, and the semantic search, what we are looking at. The business process automations, like, you know, search through the structure and the unstructured document, generate code to acquire data models, content generations, and so on and so forth. Now, if I have to understand the internal architecture, because this session's more focus on the solutions that you would be offering to your end customers, how you can put things together. It is not just an open AI. So we are building solutions. We are trying to understand the customer need and we are putting together all of them together as a solutions like document process automations with the help of as your open AI services, as you can see rightly out there. See your raw document in a form of PDF and OCR pipeline. Optical character recognitions. If there is an image, if somebody has written something on top of the image, so your AI service can read what is being written on the images along with the analysis of the images. So your document in a form of PDF. OK, so in a form of written, uh, handwritten uh, PDF or something like that. You know, uh, so all of them, all kind of stuff uh, with the help of AI services, we can read it. And we can extend a typical PDF and OCR into the Azure form recognitions. Like, for example, uh, your AI will be able to read the invoice, you know, rather than reading by a human. If somebody raise an invoice, I have to, I, my application can read the invoice and make the pay payment then and there or connect to an accounts by telling what, what need to be uh, done based on the invoice raised by the customers. So we want everything to be automated. So we do not want a human to come in and read the invoice and make the payment. That has to be done automatically. So making no mistake when I'm reading an invoice, that is something as your form recognizer is going to do it in a form of key value pairs. And all these things, as I said, whether it's the form recognizer, whether it is OCR and reading, you know, uh, from a PDF is typically done by Azure Cognitive Service, set of cognitive. So Azure Cognitive Service is not just a one API, it's a state of rest API. And we will be subsequently making call to all the APIs to do all kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Reading a PDF document, reading uh, the optical character recognitions, or maybe reading an invoices, reading a bills and so on and so forth. And through the functions, I can make a call, the Azure function, which is serverless computing, that as you can see. So you can take the output of that call that we made into the functions can goes into a Cosmos DB, document-based database. All the data would be stored in the Cosmos DB in a form of document, JSON document, with the help of functions. Or we can extend the capability by making a call to an Azure OpenAI services. If the Microsoft Cognitive Service is not capable of working on those text, so maybe the Microsoft Azure Cognitive Service is not a generative AI. The generative AI means you can create a text out of the text. 
OK, so that may not be possible at this moment with a set of API that we are going to explore from the Azure Cognitive Service point of view. But yes, it is possible by just making a call to the Azure OpenAI services. So whenever we feel like which is not possible in Azure Cognitive Service, anyway, we know the capability of Azure OpenAI service in the field of what we have discussed, the four use cases in the previous DAC, in the field of code generation, in the field of summarize and classifies, you know, in the field of images. So we can take help of the OpenAI services from the Microsoft Azure, and that can be incorporated via web application. So ultimately the user. When you say the ultimate end customer is going to interact with the web application, but behind the web applications, you will be making a call to the OpenAI services. You will be making a call to a Cosmos DB through a functions. You'll be making a call to a cognitive service where this particular uh, data is going to be operated. Right, so but the front end, the UI that you are interacting as a as a customer, it is just a web application that is being deployed on Microsoft as your cloud platform, and it can be distributed globally everywhere that applications can be made available. Yes, it could be presented graphically with the help of some kind of Power BI also. We know that Power BI is an application through which the real time data can be drawn in a form of graphs, selecting uh, the type of graph that you want to build. So it's a solution like it is, as I said before also, it is not just a model that I am using it, but I have to bring a solutions to my customer. Along with that, I may be doing a lot of things from a web application point of views. The one tax may be go and call an open AI to do some kind of generative text you know, implement some generative text and so on and so forth. So we are looking at the bigger picture today in context of Microsoft Azure, and that is what uh, I am discussing. But yes, we'll go back and explore the service. Practically, we'll see it, how it would be. But we are just talking about the underlying, you know, uh, uh, services or maybe how we can put them together to build the solutions for uh, our customer or within your own organization. So context center analysis using a speech AI and the open AI. So what it does, so it, it's basically saying that this is the caller. Will call. Person to person conversations. And the caller is going to connect with the call center agent. So in a form of maybe in a bot. Or in a form of human. So if the caller can be responded by a bot. Without escalating his query to a call center agent. So. We don't need to use this that it, that that call center agent can be in a form of bot in a form of AI application. And all these conversations can go into a storage. It's called as a blob storage on the Azure. So in a form of transcript, in a form of audio files, the conversation between the caller and the uh, call center resident or a, or, or a call center bot uh, that is being used to respond to the caller. The once it is being stored on the Azure storage in a form of ball, in a form of audio files, and that can be taken to some kind of cognitive service called speech to text. Because the audio file can be converted into a text. And the text can be given as an input to the Azure Open AI service, what we have been discussing, to do the summarize, to do the classify, and so on and so forth, that model what we talked about. So we are making extension or we are we are we are basically extending or we are basically looking at the advanced implementations. What we have been doing so far from the Microsoft Azure cognitive service point of view, Microsoft uh, legacy AI services point of view and extending it to an open AI because. The speech to text can do only 
you know, the translations from the from the audio to a text, but beyond that, the speech to text won't be able to uh, deliver. Then we take the help of the open AIs, where we talk about the different categories, the generative AI, what we have been discussing. And those things can be presented in a form of Power BI inside or in a, 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 into a CRM applications or something like that. But this is something what we are talking about will make a complete difference what traditionally we have been doing. Uh, just taking an example of this uh, particular uh, use cases or maybe uh, a domain, the call center domain, what we are discussing at this moment. So this is what we are going to go and probably we are uh, exploring that as you can see. It's a playground that we would be getting access from uh, the. Open AI studio that we are going to go, going to explore in some time from now. So we can deploy a model with a name. This is the name of the model that we have deployed. And this model is capable of doing multiple things. So we can drop down this and we can pick one of them. So here we can uh, we can go and say, OK, do some uh, or may say a uh, classifications or may say something like summarizations or may say something like uh, the code generations or whatever it may be. So you can see that. So this is what you can see as your OpenAI instructions and the output. So it is an example of extracting information from a text and summarize it. This is what we have been talking about. So we could have select the summarize from the drop down one. All right, so like that we can keep going and doing different things all together. This is what you can see at this moment what I was talking about. This is what you want to see. So you can convert them into some kind of JSON. Output as a JSON. So it's a limitless capability that we are talking about at this moment. So the language also being understood from one language to another language is also possible. OK, so having said that. They were. We have been discussing like, yeah, these are the capabilities. So now we will be looking at. How we can get access to the Azure Open AI by going into a demo and walk you through. To just to make you familiar with the platforms, where do I find the open Azure Open AI? Uh, you know, um, services what we have been discussing from the Microsoft Cloud Platform. So to summarize everything what we have learned so far, the Azure OpenAI service bring the generative AI model developed by OpenAI to an Azure platform. That is the moot point what we have discussed so far. And that is going to enable you to develop powerful AI solutions that benefit from the security scalability integrations of the service provided by Azure Cloud Platform. This is what we have seen in the previous solutions. 
So having said that, what we are going to explore now, we will learn how to get start with the Azure OpenAI by provisioning the service as an, uh, <coughs> as an Azure resource and using Azure OpenAI Studio by deploying <coughs> and exploring the model capabilities, what model can do going forward. This is what probably we are going to see. Now there is some kind of prerequisite things that you have to do it. So you have to sign up to a subscription. If you have an Azure subscription already, that's fine. So you can get the subscription for free. OK. And then you have to visit to this. Open AI apply from the AKAMS site. To answer a few questions that why you want to use an open AI. So once you have submitted your uh, form, so Microsoft is going to evaluate it and enable the open AI service under your subscription. But if you don't do that, uh, you are not supposed to, uh, you won't be able to provision the open AI resources, what we are about to do until you go and, you know, uh, Submit the forms from this uh, aka.ms uh, uh, open AI apply. Yeah, sure, I will do that in, in some time. Yes, I'll be sharing this in. And then we would be going into the Microsoft Azure portals and we'll, we'll see to it. Practically, we are going to look at, but I'm just walk you through at this moment what need to be done. But yes, uh, this is what uh, we are going to go and do it. And in the process of this Microsoft Azure, we will be going with. Uh, the studio that is all about. Uh, open AI as your open AI studio. So where we can uh, deploy, manage and explore the model so it's a beautifully designed a kind of explorer for the models uh, that is basically made available behind the open ai services so with that let's get started One minute. All right, so this is a kind of quick. Uh, walk through. Uh, that you have seen this. Uh, yeah, OK, so you are. OK, fine. So hope you can uh, hear me now. Just a minute. 
five and rotate them to move. Okay, fine. All right. So now what we are going to go and do it. So let's go to the Microsoft Azure uh, subscription. So I'll be just uh, giving a quick demo what was being uh, played some time back from the PPT itself. Now this is the same thing that I'm going to do uh, step by step. So I will take you to my uh, development machines. Just a minute. <clears throat> So hope you can see my new desktop I'm sharing with you. So first I will go to the management portal. The Azure management portal first. The portal.azure.com. I'll create a new kind of dashboard by giving a name called OpenAI. Now, just to make you understand what we have to do, just if I have to work with OpenAI from the Microsoft Azure, so what we need to do? If I just to make you understand that, that you completely thoroughly understand what need to be done. We all of us know that Microsoft as your cloud resources is being made under a subscription. We call as an Azure subscription. Now within an Azure subscriptions with the help of Azure that can be access with the help of uh, as your account. So you can just say an account only. So you you must have account and within an account you can have one or more subscription. That is something that always uh, applicable. Now, from your account, if you get one subscription, the first thing you have to go and create a resource group. So you all of us know what is resource group. The resource group is just a logical container where we deploy our resources. But what resources that we would be deploying as of now? So we are going to deploy a resource called OpenAI. This is the resource that we have to say as your. Open. AI. Service. So it's like a API. Then. This service can be called. From an application. Like I say, this is a web a, uh, web application. So we are going to make a call to this API. So this is what we are talking about. So both web applications and Azure OpenAI service is being deployed under the same subscriptions within the same resource group. 
You can make this web applications available in some other region also. Suppose this region where I have created my resource group is an East US. But you can do anywhere, wherever you feel like, because we know the Microsoft resource is being distributed across the globe. We just need to identify the regions and start deploying the resources. Now behind the scene, so as your open AI, the service is going to give me a set of models that we have discussed. The set of models, it may be a GPT-4 and GPT-3 and DALI and, and embedding and, and uh, yeah, that so what we have been discussing uh, in the models point of views. So I can go and create an open AI resources, but I can consume any model from the set of model that is being offered by the Azure open AI service. It depends what model that I will be using. So my web application is going to suppose use the GPT model. Fine, so all the capabilities the GPT-4 is offering, so I should be able to display them from my web applications by making a call to that particular model so with the help of OpenAI services. So this is what, you know, all these things, then the other things will go and come. I mean, you know, so we talk about the other services like uh, Key Vault. So we talk about something like as your active directory. That is the identity platform. As your cognitive service. You know containers and so on and so forth. Privacy and security and governance uh, kind of uh, the services which is available uh, from the Microsoft Azure. So, but the, before we go and write in applications and consume that, you know, uh, the uh, open AI services, create an UI and so on and so forth, it would be very difficult to create this application overnight. You know, because application means you have to create a, a user friendly UI, user interface, like you now how the user can interact from these applications to get things done by making call to the open AI services. So for that, we can test this API open AI service from the different ready made tools like tools like uh, we can make use of uh, the open AI studio that we have been as your open AI studio. That is one or maybe by writing a Python code. With the help of SDK. Or I can go and do it by using writing a C sharp code. Using the C sharp SDK. So we are going to look at here. Op, as your open AI studio also, we are going to look at not Python one, so we are going to look at one of the coding sample also, how C sharp code can make a call to the open AI service that is being provisions under my subscription, under my resource group, under a particular region. So what is the step number one then now? In order to use an open AI from the Microsoft Cloud Platform, the state step number one is to create an open AI service resources. From the Azure port. That is what we are going to go and do quickly. So 
So we'll go back to the Microsoft Azure. And then we can just look for all services. And then we can type open AI. OK, this is under the banner of the cognitive service. In fact, if I go to. AI and machine learning. In the cognitive service, we get as your open AI. This is the list of services. So as your open AI is just one of the service among the other service that you can see right from those. Computer visions, cognitive services, custom visions, language, personalized, translator, speech service, what we discussed, face API, who can recognize the face? You know, human face. You can say that, okay, whose face this is all about, like this. By, by just giving a face to the face API. So we'll go and create an Azure Open AI. So I can just go and say create from there itself. So I can first I say that we have to create a resource group. Under the resource group, we have to go and put that Open AI instance, the resources that what we discussed. So we go and create a new resource group. Open AI resource group. This is the name of the resource group that I'm giving my Open AI resource group. The locations I'm putting in is TOS and the name. I'm just giving the name demo open AI 007. It should be unique name. This is what you can see. The name of your resources. This will also be. Your custom domain name in your endpoint. Because the service is going to produce an endpoint. So you can configure with your custom domain also rather than using the default domain that we supposed to get from the Microsoft Azure. We can implement a custom domain, so your resource name can only include alphanumeric characters and the hyphens and cannot start and end with an hyphen. So pricing tier at this moment, it is made available standard for me, but all of us know that nothing will come for free. Every time you make a call to this service, you have to pay. So under which SKU stock keeping unit for this particular product that you have registered for is a standard pricing TS. Now, how we are going to pay for the call that you will be making to this open AI service that would be decided by the SLA that will come under that pricing tier. The service level agreement from the Microsoft. So these are all openly available. You can go and explore that if I'm using something like this. So how am I going to pay Microsoft? So all would be made available publicly. So with that, we are going to the next one. So there is a, a networking. I can put my Open AI in a private network like this. So we call as a virtual network. So 
So when you put something inside the virtual network, virtual network also meet, need to be compartmentalized with something called subnet. This is the subnet. So one VNet can have one or more subnet and the subnet can have the resources. Suppose hypothetically this subnet from this virtual network have this open AI resource that we are about to create. Then we have to go and select the network. As of now, I don't have a network that created for this. There are network, but it is for other services. But as of now, uh, we have not created any private network for keeping the open AI inside. So we'll make it all network means because by putting something inside the private network and calling that resource from the outside of the network would be challenged. Then we talk about OK firewalls. Then we'll talk about network security group, NSZ, who can come in, who can go out and so on and so forth. OK, so as I said this to get your open AI. Uh, service activated, you have to go and fill up a form. I have already shared this. Uh, what you call is. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's already there, so you have to activate it. It will take some time. You are not going to get activate right away, so you will be given a confirmation mail in some time from now once you submit that form. OK. So if you are doing uh, parallelly with me, so it may not be applicable or it may not be a kind of until you have done it before. It takes some time. Sometimes it would be pretty quick, but usually it will take some time, a couple of hours. Then uh, you will be given the activation mails. So once you receive the mails, so you should be able to create the resources. You should be able to deploy the resources from your Azure subscription going forward. OK, so. So with that. We can go and uh, to the next I say this, it would be all network. And then I go to the next and I can leave this um, tag empty. And we. About to deploy the open AI resources under my subscriptions within a resource group. And uh, targeted to. Uh, what is the validation credential? So I just need to see. OK, so I just need to go and change the name so I can just go and give a name something like. Uh, Somebody must have used the same name. So because this name has to be unique because there is a domain name associated with that name. So. Yeah, so now this time is fine because I changed the name. So it will take one or two minutes to complete the deployment. Yeah. 
it's done. All right, so. So it is already deployed. Now we can, it's still creating. It will take internally some time to complete that. So I just refresh. Yeah, it is succeeded now. Now I can go inside the OpenAI resources that I have just deployed. Then we said now I have to consume this service by identify a model. By identifying the model that which model from this open AI that we are going to consume, how we are going to consume. So we need some kind of the playground to test, to see, to explore these things because we cannot directly go and develop an application to make a call. So for that, we will go and explore this open AI service from a unified studio, what we call as as your OpenAI Studio. And from there we can make a call to this OpenAI API that is being deployed just now. So by how to go inside, I can just click on Explore. It will open a new So billing for the cognitive service happen at the resource group level, not resource group level in the resource level. So resource group is just a logical container. We don't pay uh, for the resource group. We pay for the resource only. So how many resource that you have deployed? The all resource may have a different pricing model, so it will be calculated accordingly. So per resource, the cost that you have to pay so it is not related to the resource group. Resource group is just a logical container. OK, so now we are taking, we are going into this uh, kind of uh, uh, Azure AI Studios, Open AI Studio that we can see at this moment. So starting with the create a new deployment. Because as of now, so we do not have any deployment under this particular service. Just now we have created. So we have to deploy a model that you want to work with. That is something that we are going to talk about. So to get start with, you will need to create a new deployment. Then you can select an example below and create custom model based on one of the available Reset to create custom model and so on and so forth. But we'll go and say create a new model. You can select uh, from here also. These are a template directly you can go and say, but you can always explore those things. So the first thing we just need to create a new deployment. So here we go with the deployment name. So we can go and select the model. Suppose text defense. This is the model that I just want to select. So at this moment, what we are looking at, as I said, we just need to select the model that you would be using. These are all base model. As you can see, you can create custom model uh, using those base model anytime from now. That is something the customizations always you will be doing. But uh, as your OpenAI, as we say, this include the multiple model that you can see in the list. 
each of them is optimized for the different set of capabilities and the performance. So here we are going to select the DaVinci model from the GPT-3 families. And that is going to do a text generation model, how we can generate the text from a given prompt, from a given input. So it could be used for summarizing and generating the natural language, classifying a text from the natural language, the natural language, what day-to-day -day basis we communicate. So you can always explore the model specific capabilities by going into Microsoft Azure documentations because it's a huge one. So we need to start one at a time. But the, the kind of you know, work that you would be doing in order to use a model for implementing something would be the same for all the model what we are looking at from the drop down list. Can we find anywhere which model can be used for which service? What do we mean by which service? See, every model is being every model is being defined with a set of tasks to be delivered. Now, when I select this model called text TVNC003, it has come from the category called GPT-3 families. But what primarily this model is going to deliver? This model is going to deliver related to summarization of an existing input text, classify a text, maybe creating some kind of objective questions from a given text, so you'll get to know from the documentation. That is what I'm saying that. So you have to say this model capabilities. So every model has been announced by the open AI with some set of capability until you go and customize them. And the capability of this model is being made available in the documentation. So I'll be sharing all the documentation link at the end of this uh, presentation means end of the training, so you can always explore them to know more about the model. So which model will be relevant to your workload that you are doing? You are developing an AI application, then you. So you will be doing something to solve a customer problem or your problem, then you have to find out what would be the appropriate model. So there are a whole lot of models that you have to go and definition of uh, all the models and pick up the right one. So this sessions will give you only the the jump start, basically, uh, you know how to start, how to do things. But yes, model by model, going the definitions, you know, implementing them for a particular use cases for all the model is not the purpose of this particular sessions. Anyway, you can do it on your own, so with a given time frame, okay? So we'll go and pick up that model, what we are discussing at this moment. Yeah. So I can say, <clears throat> set text, my <clears throat> something called, OK, so that is any name that we can give it and we can go with create without going into an advanced options. That is the filter conditions that we can see. Uh, that's not needed at this moment, so we are creating this deployment at this moment. So I can go to this model. And it's talks about the detail of the models that is being created. Who has created when it was created? That is the 
and the properties of the model, model name that we selected, model version at this moment, because that is a base one. The version is one only at this moment. The deployment tab, what we have selected in the main is standard. Filter is default. And we'll be talking this like uh, you have been discussing like what is token and all. So we'll be talking more on that in the token in some time from now. What basically a token is all about. Uh, just a minute. So this is all the specification rate limits and response. Uh, we'll, these are called parameters. We'll be discussing bit of parameters after some time. So what is what are created before and deployed where is being used? Not able to understand, but still. Uh, what we created. So what we created means we have created an open AI resources. And now we are saying that this open AI resources is being deployed with a model. What is that model? The text DVNC003. What for? It is something to do with the text summarizations and classifications. We are going to see the capability in some time. So it means my resource is being used internally to implement this model whenever I'm going to make a call from my input. So eventually I have to pay for the call that I'll be making on my OpenAI services, but OpenAI services in an, it, 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 it's an empty box until we go and tell what model that OpenAI service is going to use. So it does not make any sense. And that is what we are doing at this point. So we are deploying a model on top of my OpenAI resources and telling my OpenAI resources that go and use the model when people are going to consume this API. Okay, so hope you understand what where we are at this moment and what we are trying to do at this moment. So we cannot directly use a model with without creating resources. Of course, in, in Microsoft Azure context, it is being made, model is being made available with the help of Azure resources. Of course, if you go to an chat GPT and open AI out of the Microsoft Azure, you should be able to make in model directly use. So please do not be confused what we are doing at this moment. We are mainly focusing on the open AI services through Microsoft Azure. So all the talks, all the relevant things that we will be doing, it is in context of Microsoft Azure. So don't confuse yourself. OK, so the model is a different things. The model can be published. Model can be used directly from your applications if it is out of the Microsoft Azure. If it is you are working directly with some kind of model, what maybe you have discussed in the previous session and so on and so forth. So please remember once for all, I'm telling you this, that we are only talking about how Microsoft as your open AI is going to be consumed by our customers, including you. OK, you as a developer, you should know. What is the first thing we have to deploy a resource? What is the second thing I have to go and tell the resource which model? Supported model means. Uh, you know, all model may be available outside of the Microsoft Azure cannot be supported from inside of the Microsoft Azure. But since we are talking about the main model that is being. Used by the open AI that is being supported by Microsoft as your open AI also at the same time, more or less. OK, so. Uh, but. If I'm going to use Microsoft as your service for an open AI. So we have to deploy the resource that is the mandatory 
what we are going to do. If you do it programmatically also, we need to know the specification of the resource that you deployed uh, on Microsoft Azure. OK. So. So hope you understood uh, and 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 hope uh, that is making sense uh, in context of Microsoft Azure. Now what next? OK, all good. So now we are going to go and ready for testing this model. Model is being deployed under the banner of the resources. And. Uh, And we can go by clicking on the open in the playground. So this is where we have multiple playground. I can convert, I can change it to uh, chat or I can change it to Delhi E and uh, I can uh, be uh, with the completions. OK. So what we are going to do in the playground, so we select completions in the playground as you can see out there. The deployment is already being selected because we have just come from that only. Of course you can, why not? So you can always go and deploy multiple deployment. You can do it, of course. So it, it's, it's all about, yes, you can. <clears throat> uh, OK, so. So we at this time we are going with this uh, only one deployment at this moment. An example, if I go to this example list and that is what I was talking about. Because under this model, we can do any one of this. Is a huge list of doing things. You know. So. In your free time, you can test all of them, you will get the sample as well and you will be uh, given all the details what you are going to use in what context you are going to use. But if you use one or two, you will you will get an overall ideas that you can keep coming and keep using those uh, kind of uh, example options from the example list. So we'll go and select summarize an article so we'll go this one so we said summarize an article okay that is what we have select so you can see that you have a text right in front of you so that is what the plumbing text that is being given to you rather than getting your own text here just to understand going with your own stuff. So the summarized text sample consists of a prompt that provides some text. Starting with the line. Provide a summary of the text below, as you can see. That captured its main idea. This is what is said. And starting the prompt with this sentence, tell the model to summarize the following block of text. This is what we said. Can you summarize the, the, the following block of text that you can see right below to my instruction? All right, so. So at this moment, we are not going to go and do any kind of change in the parameters. You can see in the right hand side. You have the parameters out there. This is this is the the block for the parameters. We'll come back and discuss the parameter in some time from now. What is called temperature, what is called tokens. And, and few parameters we are going to go and discuss. So now we'll be going with the default parameters value at this moment. To get. Uh, what I supposed to get. So with that.
and at this moment we just need to understand the definition of the token because uh, open ai model use token okay so that's something that we must understand so the definition of a token is uh it's 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 uh, you can say a token can be thought of as a piece of words like you know set of characters before the api process the prompt that is that you can see on the screen the input is broken down into the tokens and these tokens are not cut up exactly where the word starts or end token can include trailing space and even sub words okay so that is something that is so ultimately the processing would be based on the token so how many token is being processed that based on that the billing is going to come for my service that i have deployed so more token means more token process means the more payment that you have to make at the end of the Yeah, so output of the summary will be the same of an open AI web app. I did not open AI web app and Azure services. Assuming both use the same model. Yes, yes, of course it will be. So more token. No, no, more token does not mean is a faster processing. So more token means your length of the uh you know uh your your a prompt is more that's why the more token is going to be created okay so with that we can just go and create generate one so let's see what is can be seen out there So this is what uh, we get. So as you can see, now the point what we see that, you know, this is called generative model that we have been talking about. So it's simplify or you can replace a kind of a tedious work that human has to do, you know, going through a reading to a paragraphs of the data, paragraphs of content, paragraph of information, and finally extract what that paragraphs and what that particular text is trying to tell us. Yeah, of course, that would be so model differs with the how many token they deal with. Yes. <laughs> All right, so go with this. If you. So we just need to check that, you know, when you talk about 800 or 500 or something that every model has a come with a limit. So you cannot put your own number so that you will get it from a documentation that prerequisite to use that model to do something that how many maximum token that we can configure for a given a model while I'm doing something. So this is all would be made available to you before you go and use this model because these are the parameters value these are the basic informations that everybody will be knowing before they consume it okay so 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 when we go back to this uh, process like you know we talk about generate and we get the response uh, out of the original text and uh, the summary should uh, communicate the key point from the original text 
in less verbose language. That is the only objective of, uh, you know, the summarize uh, uh, what uh, we are doing through the AI model, the open AI model that what we are looking at. So we can always regenerate this also. Anytime, whenever you feel like. OK, so when you regenerate so dynamically, randomly, it, it can uh, it can give you uh, a new language each time it is being called because it is nothing fixed exactly what you supposed to write. It's not like uh, a kind of the pre-instruction that you have given, OK. But uh, those service will be a deliver what you are expected to deliver. But exact word every time you regenerate uh, may not be the same. So it could be fine tune or it could be sometime uh, from the different from the but without missing the main point uh, in context of creating summary out of the text what we are doing at this moment. That is also another aspect of, from the regenerating point of view. Can we use Azure is leveraging OpenAI service by deploying OpenAI model through API or the Azure does something different? First, to I have to understand your question, but I don't know uh, like uh, what to answer. But uh, what I understood from here. Again, I'm saying that Azure Open AI is just a service like the cognitive service that we had before. Now, how we have been using cognitive service as an API? The only difference is that the Azure Open AI coming with the robustness of the model means Behind the Azure OpenAI service, we get a set of model which was not there in the, with the cognitive service. So cognitive service work on a single model. We cannot customize cognitive service unless from the few of the cognitive service. OK, now while I'll use the cognitive service, I can use it from anywhere. I can write an application so I can make a call to this cognitive service as just an API. I can go to a command prompt by using a curl command. I can go to a postman. I can just fire an uh, you know HTTP request as long as they are they they they, they are uh, the rest API. So similarly, I can also do things with my but the additional things that we will be working with the Open AI is to identify the model. Unlike the cognitive service, we do not have to identify a model because it is pre-created. It is with the service itself. I can go and tell the cognitive service use this model for this application, use that model for this application. No, that is not possible, but OpenAI made it possible because OpenAI support more than one uh, a model. So from the developer point of views, if I'm writing a Python code or if I'm writing a C sharp code, yes, I have to go and make a call to an API that I have deployed under my subscription. At the same time, I have to also inform. So what model that API would be using uh, within this application? So that's how the open AI is going to be consumed. Uh, from uh, now to we are just testing by using uh, either GUI base. It's like a portal, you know, from where we are using and trying to understand uh, the different component of an open AI. But uh, when you go back to the development space, writing applications using your 
respective language they are also the same pattern would be applicable so i will show you in some time from now how to do it from say i have already explained all these things what you are asking i said this open ai is a different organization microsoft is a different organization so microsoft has invested on the open ai and microsoft is using open ai technology from their own services the bottom line is simple so the open ai as an independent vendor so independent r and d organization has come up with a set of models and who can deliver all those things that we have been talking about. All right. So every model has the capability. Now question is that that is still available. The people can go to the open AI and they can consume this model, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about the Microsoft is made those model available through their own services. So my traditional concept of consuming Microsoft as your service remain the same. How we have been consuming a service till today from the Microsoft would be the same with the OpenAI service also. It's just an another service popping into the list of Microsoft as your services. But in case of OpenAI, in compared to the cognitive service, ex existing AI services, in the umbrella inside the Microsoft Azure would be slightly different because here we talk about model driven call that we are going to make on the API. But in a traditional uh, typical cognitive service, we don't say uh, we don't specify the model that we want to use because these are all pre modeled, uh, you know, the services like, for example, I call a face API. So to recognize a human face, so it will do only the face recognition. It will not do something else because I can't go and change the model of the face API to do something else, you know. So that's something that you need to understand how this is different from. <clears throat> yes, of course it is. No, it is not about good and bad. It is all about what you supposed to deliver. You know, you are you are writing an application, you are developing a solutions um, uh, because you wanted to implement something. So you just need to see uh, whether it is getting implemented or not. So as long as it is being implemented, that's fine because that's why we are looking at the capability by testing them, summarizing a test. So do you see uh, it is making sense to you that whether uh, the Azure OpenAI using the GPT uh, a three model, whether it is being uh, whether it is coming out or uh, coming um, as an expected output uh, from this uh, example or not, you have to figure out and you have to go and take a call. So what Azure cannot change that. <clears throat> Don't know. Anyway, OK, so let's go to the. Uh, yeah, so we are in the middle of it. So now. So we can also. Kind of. Uh, add new things under the summarized response. We can add a new line. And we can just go and say something like generate once again. You can start looking at like this. It's it's, it's saying that so it is start looking at this and it is start saying. OK, so that is something. It is basically we are submitting a new prompt. And a new response that we get. The previous prompt and response provide the context in the ongoing dialogue 
with that model, enabling the model to generate the appropriate answer to your questions, which is relevant to what we have asked in the previous one. Like that, it could be a kind of change that you can build over a period of time while we are interacting with this model anytime from now. OK, a changing model, we don't call it a change the model from A to B. You can customize the model with your own data. OK, that is called customizing a model according to your own required. So changing model does not make any sense because you cannot change a model of GPT or maybe something else. Of course, you can customize what is being given to us. Uh, we can always retrain with, on, with, with our own data. To, to customize the model. OK, you just, uh, yeah, so you can go and. Keep doing this. Wait, I can just go and replace all of them. So we just go and write something like this. Just give me a minute. Yes, yes, retain with new data is possible. <laughs> OK, so this is again, I'm putting my own contents and try and generate this. And you are saying that provide a summary of the text below that capture the main ideas like this. So it's interesting is basically, you know. It's called as a. NL. It is driven by NLP. It's natural language processing, like how we talk to a human. I can talk to my AI service the same way. You know, so that is something very, very interesting. So it's me. It's not like, OK, they will follow a particular standard, like way I would like to interact with them until it is completely understood, not understood by myself itself, uh, you know, then it will not understand by them also. But as long as uh, it can understand by a layman or anybody's, so AI is also going to understand. That is the natural language what we have been talking about. So understanding a natural language is always being uh, kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, always an innovations in the field of AIs because it is started some time back with uh, NLP. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, natural language processing. We can train with the languages that I want to ask to my application. And this is a kind of bot applications that we have seen before. So bot is completely driven by NLP because you are going to ask bot uh, anything that you want to ask. If the bot is trained with that language, the bot is going to respond to that. So base part of this, apart from the capability is amazing, but the base part of that, how we interact with this AI services. So with a natural language, that is something really, really important. So now I can change this example from the summarized to some kind of classified text. I can change it to do something different out there. So it's automatically default text has come out there. So the classified text prompt describe the context for the model in the form of an instruction to classify a news article into one or more or one of the range of categories like, you know. And then provide the text for the news article and end with classifies, classified category. The intention is that model is to complete the final line of the prompt by predicting the appropriate categories under which category that news, you know, that is something classify. 
because the news may be related to different kind of categories. News may be a political news, news may be a sports news, news may be a criminal related news. We are just talking about like, you know, so this is how. Uh, how. Uh, <clears throat> you are going to go and. Uh, <clears throat> classify the text that uh, and as I explained that, you know, saying that, you know, what category that text belongs to. So if I go and generate this, so it talks about something like business. So we can go and put the news articles again. And we can just write a prompt that we want at this moment here. OK, so roughly there is no idea. It is depends upon how big that you would be doing. It is all about the token base. For example, like, you know, so we'll be spending one dollar per uh, per hundred tokens like this. So it is not kind of hours or something like this. OK, this is always the API is being calculated based on uh, the number of call that we made and how heavy call that we are making it because 24 by 7 or hour we don't call them, so it is only call when we need to perform some task. When you ask from that, it is not an infinitive loop that is going to run for kind of you know uh, hours and hours and calculate and pricing them per hours kind kind of things. <clears throat> okay, so this is what it says as a tech out there, and as you can see, this is how uh, you can you know talk about or maybe this is how you should be able to sort of. Uh, yes, I mean, explore this. OK. So it's been a long uh, hour, so what we'll do, we'll take a break and we'll come back in 20 minutes and then we'll continue a few more. Uh, example related to the the playgrounds and then we will see finally how it can be. Uh, call from a typical uh, code uh, from the C sharp or something like this, uh, and then uh, we will be good for this presentations today. So till then, if you have any questions, you can post your questions. So we'll be going to a break uh, now for 20 minutes.
Hi guys, I hope my screen is visible to you all and you can hear me out. Uh, okay, so as I said earlier in the webinar, at the start of the webinar, that we are providing a complimentary uh, learning achievement batch for AI 102 certification. So you have to follow the certain steps to get this badge activated. So in this badge, you will get an overview of the modules and learning path for AI 102 certification. So for that, you have to go on a Microsoft Learn to create your profile. Once you create your account, you just have to click on a URL which has been shared with you all in the chat box with these steps. And you have to redeem the uh, batch. Once you redeem the batch, the batch will reflect on your profile. As you can see over here, uh, you can go uh, in achievements and you can see the oh, batch in modules and courses. For AI 102. Also, if you face any problem while redeeming the batch, do let me know in the chat box so I can help you out with the same. Yeah, certainly there is a message that you need to explain again what you have explained some time back. If you are with me, you're not audible. Uh, if you're speaking, sorry. Hello. No, there Can is a message me? saying that uh, you have to explain one more time. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Uh, so, guys, this is the AI 102 learning achievement batch which we are giving you as a complimentary. Uh, so for that, you have to follow certain steps which has been uh, given in the chat box. Uh, also, I have shared the screen. You can see the steps. First, you have to go on Microsoft Learn. Like this, you have to search Microsoft Learn or you, you have to go on the link. I have shown on the screen. Then you have to create, uh, you have to sign in and create an account on Microsoft Learn if you don't have any account on Microsoft Learn. After that, uh, with these steps, I have mentioned a URL for AI 102 uh, Learning Achievement Batch. You just have to click on that uh, link to get the batch activated. Once the batch get activated, no, it will reflect on your Learn profile. Under Achievements, uh, you can see over here, the batch will reflect like this under modules, courses and more. You have to go on achievements. Then you will get a module courses and more. There you can see the batch. If you face any problem while do redeeming the batch, do let me know in the chat box.
guys i hope you all are able to get the batch activated if you are facing any problem while redemption do let me know so i can help you out also the recordings as pratik is asking the recordings will be available to you all on our official youtube channel so we'll share the youtube channel link in the chat box so do go and subscribe to our youtube channel so the recording will be accessible to you all over there Okay, Satali. So, are you done? So we can start now. Anything? Oh uh, yeah, else so you can go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sure. No, anything else? I will else stop my screen. Yeah, sure. Uh, I will share the details regarding the certification and all in the chat box. So, guys, if you have any questions or queries, you can reach out to me. I will share my details in the chat box. Thank you. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go come back and start practicing a few more. Uh, so if I clean everything from what we did in the previous example with the new things that I'm going to bring in here. Now, if you look at this particular uh, text, this is a prompt that includes the natural language context information that instruct the model on how to behave. Specifically, it includes that the model should assume the role of a teacher creating a test for the student. This is what has come out from this prompt. So, I just wanted to go and tell the model that yes, this is the input and you go and read and create a test paper out of these paragraphs. OK, so that is what you are saying and you are acting as a teachers at this moment. Now, at the same time, if I go. And change couple of values in the parameters, I want to start with zero here. So meaning of this. Temperatures, what we are talking about here, the value of zero use for minimizing the randomness resulting in a stable and predictable responses by putting it zero. But the if the change of the temperature parameters values go upward directions, more than zero values, then of course you will see, you, you may get some kind of you know, inaccuracies. Then you get it from the lower temperature values. So that is one thing that is being used out here. The randomness would be more increased and it lead to an inaccuracy if you increase the value of the temperatures. Because if you go and point this information, what the temperature is talking about, you can read it. Control the randomness. Lower the temperature means the model will produce more repetitive and deterministic response, increasing 
the temperature will result in more unexpected and creative response. So it will go and you know do things on their own way, creative also at the same time. But which one you would like to go with? So I'll go with this zero and the token maximum token length from 60 to 500 that I am saying. So you can also go and see what is being said. The limit of the number of token per model responses. So I'm I'm setting the limit. On the number of token per model response. So whatever the response that I'm going to get, it has to be less than equal to 500 token generations. That's how I may control my pricing. That's how I may control the expectations, what I'm expecting. I don't want very elaborated stuff. It has to be managed uh, within 500 token. So the APA support of maximum 4000 token. If you if you ask the previous question shared between the prompt, including the system messages, example messages, histories and other etc. So roughly four character of a typical size of a token in English language, that is what they are talking about. So roughly what we are saying that I want to get my response within 500 limit of token that would be generating as a response back to me. So by looking at the different things or different expectations at this moment. So when I click on the generate button, so what I'm expecting that it should consist of the value in the pre response text parameter followed by the multiple choice equations that a character could use to test the student. Or a teacher can use to test a student on a computer vision topic in the prompt because in this prompt it is all about computer vision service related information is being given out there. OK, so that is what we want some kind of question bank out of this text, out of this information like that can be used by a teacher because open AI for everyone. For the developer, for the teachers, you know, for the uh, for the storyteller, for the application writers, for everyone, you can you everyone can use this. So if I generate with that, this is what we are getting out there. OK, so this is what in equations that has come from here. The equations come from here and the, the equations and come from here. So like it's a tremendous job is being done by. The open AI. It is delivering. On the expectations what. If I'm a teacher, I need to set equation papers. I just put the detail of a text and it's created questions for me. I think that is one of the interesting one out there. Now, if I want to regenerate with a different parameter value, suppose I change the parameter value to point zero point. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can uh, 0 0.9, for example, it almost the maximum one in between 0 to 1. So as I said, the parameter temperature, which is basically control the degree to which the response generations include an element of randomness. The value 0 use for minimizes randomness resulting in stable predictable responses. But by increasing the values. Then you will be seeing. Maybe it contains the inaccuracy then. What we got in the lower temperature values. Output. Result 
So I can reason it by changing the values out there. This is how you can see a little bit of difference from the previous one, how it was given. But randomness is lower because we have a very minimum text as an input. Uh, but still you will see the difference uh, once you increase the value of temperature to get more randomness out there. Yeah, this is what we have been discussing here. What uh, cases like uh, you will be using zero we have already to get more accuracies. You do not want the innovations in there. You know, so because if you make it more temperature, so they will try to innovate. And if you try to innovate, you may be open up with new ideas, but maybe the short terms, uh, you may get some kind of inaccuracies in the result that you are going to get it. OK, so most of the cases, if you are talking about as a teachers and you want to immediately go and produce a question paper without making any mistake, without exploring the different type of questions from a given text, you should always go with a zero. But if you do want kind of experiments, you know, playing with the questions, you know, more innovations uh, thought in the questions, of course, you can just keep increasing the temperature number, uh, you know, uh, the temperature values uh, increasing from zero to a bigger number. So in that context, uh, yeah, so more creativities means innovation like, you know, oh, this could be an answer or the, rather than going with uh, it's 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 a very straightforward or something like, uh, uh, you know, uh, straightforward also make it will make a sense. It is not that it is completely go and demeaning the questions answers, the questions that you are talking about. It would be given the appropriately what we are expecting, but uh, the randomness, when you talk about the randomness, you need to understand. So when you talk about the increase, likely to increase the randomness. So, so you may expect a different responses, uh, you know, sometimes. And uh, sometimes we have realized that, you know, questions are more likely to contain some inaccuracies than the way then the ones uh, you you get it by the lower temperature number sometimes you feel like that only accurate response yes so accuracy but you will get always an innovations by you know so you, the, your thought process can be increased oh that kind of also questions can come from here then you can go back and start doing manually uh, because if you think that, you know, uh, the lot of inaccuracies, but you are trying to, uh, they are trying to make a point that how you supposed to ask the question, something like this. Yes. Yeah, so zero, no, temperature is another thing and token, token. We are bounding a token saying that we do not want to go beyond 500 token uh, because uh, maybe there would be a consequences by consuming more tokens. Maybe you can see in the cost or maybe some, uh, it can deem in uh, if I go and make things more elaborate. In fact, if you see the token is used in between the three, of 42 at this moment. So our model understand the process takes by breaking into the token, the total amount of content uh, the model can process in a single API call is also being limited by the total number of token uh, in the call. So this is what, as I explained before also. OK, so with from that, we'll go to uh, the different uh, part of this like you know so we can uh, create multiple model in fact if you go to a deployment once again this is already deployed so what is the default temperature says you to set is zero yeah 
OK, so we'll go to. Create a new deployment. And then we'll go with. Something to do with. So what model that we can go and deploy maybe? Yeah, we can go related to the code. So I want to build a code using a model called code DVNC002. So it's a good general model that can handle the most task. Uh, you know. Uh, accurately. You know, sometimes uh, you can you can select the model that can be more optimized for a specific kind of task. For example, as your open AI model can be used to generate the computer code rather than the natural language text. You know. And some model have been optimized for that task also, so you just need to validate which model is being more optimized. Uh, for that kind of task, but I'm selecting that I need a code to be generated by selecting this model called text. Uh, something, yeah, the code DVNC. So here we so also we can go and. Uh, so this is what we have selected as of now, what we get it uh, and we can just give a name of the model. So we say. So we can go and create this model so we can have multiple model under the same services. As I said before, also somebody asked that can we have more than one model deployed under the same resources? Yes. I can so I can select this model. Process is the same I can open in the. So we get to see. Uh, some kind of uh, the previous one so. So I can just go and select. Uh, the playground and. Uh, I can go to the list and I can select something what nature language to the SQL something like this. Because all are there. So the nature language to SQL is going to give us a sample prompts that provide the detail of a table in a database as you can see right there. And the descriptions of the query that is required followed by the select keyword. The intention is for the model to complete the select statement to create a query that satisfied the requirement. That is what happened. So I just go and generate this select query. So you get to see your select query right there. So if I replace everything, this is the query that we can see. If I replace everything, with something a simple one, so I want a Python code to create a function to print hello and a specified string. Where the function definition signature is being written out there. So it includes an indications of a programming language in the prompt. To be generated, which is Python 3. A comment describing the functionalities and the first part of the function definition. So, this model, what we have selected, should have completed the functions with an appropriate Python code. It would be a pretty simple one, but yes, we should be able to get some output. 
of the functions who can print a, a string or a specified string along with something uh, concatenating with that. So something like this. So apart from that also, you know, we can go to a, another playground called conversational AP, uh, the, you know, conversational, what you call as your uh, AI implementations, what we have been doing in a completions with all these things, as you can see. So you can practice all of them, whichever you want. Uh, but yes, more or less, you will get an idea on completions out there. Then if you go to The another playground where we can do some kind of uh, interactive conversations, you know, that is all about chatting that we can do. So we can create another deployment for that also. So I can select the model. This is the model that I can select at this moment available zip. G, uh, GPT 3.5 with a turbo, that is what we select. And we can give a name of this. And say. And then I deploy this model. Then it will take me to the automatically the play, playground under the chat. Last time we are here in this uh, completion once. Now with the different playgrounds, everything is given to me. So you can see that. Assistant setup. That is what specify how the chat should act and so on and so forth. Select a template also out there. You can go and select the template from there itself. So whatever the system messes, I can change this with my own thing. So here we go with this. So what is system messes? Give the model instructions about how it should behave. And any context. It should reference when generating a response. So you can describe the assistant. Personality also. Tell it what it should. And should not answer and so on and so forth. So you can do it because we are just making it simple. A system is an AI teachers that help people learn about the AI. That is what some instruction that we have given. Uh, fundamentally to this. Uh, model so we're getting into this model at this moment without using any template so far so i can just go and use something like example for user and i will give some kind of assistant instruction okay so this is we are building that model at this moment that if somebody go and ask relevant the question so so how my um, interactive ai is going to uh, answer these questions based on what we have fit that would be process that would be internally go and use as an instructions to uh, make it specific what we are going to go and ask for. So it's basically saying that. It's a kind of example that you are setting to provide the model with an example of a type of response you are expecting at the end of the day. So the model will attempt to reflect the 
tone and the style of the example, it's in own response. Ultimately, the model is going to give own response, but additional input they are putting into the model that how the model will look into your input and try to control when they will be providing their own information, own response. Now we can, with that information, so we have to go and save this, whatever the changes that we made it on that top. And then we are ready to use this model by asking our own questions. So we are asking questions. What is artificial intelligence? But the model will keep in mind what instruction is being given to me while answering those questions because it's an interactive forum like your bot. OK, so that is what you are looking at and then you are going and just post it, send it. So le let's look at this. This is who am I and the answer is coming out there. So I can go and ask the relevant questions, following questions, how it is related to the machine learning, artificial intelligence. That is also going to give me. So you can note that the context from the previous interaction is retained in the following conversation because it is still the context of AI and how machine learning is relevant to the field of AI. The context is remain. So if you see the answer, so you will find the context. You know, uh, if you see a subset of artificial intelligence, the method teaching the computer to learn from the data without being explicitly programmed, because this is trying to give me in context of artificial intelligence. The context is intact. That is also being understood by interactive model that we are operating at this moment. It's very intelligent because, you know, it's behave like a human. What is being asked before and if it is find is relevant, you try to match with the existing answer and try to collaborate with that and try to give an appropriate answer back. So what we are learning so far, we can go on and on in this case what we are learning so far. So we are learning how to provision the Azure OpenAI service in Azure subscription and how to use OpenAI Studio to deploy and explore the respective model that we want to consume. But a developer can use a REST interface, like as I said, you can go and make use of something called, uh, what do you call, uh, Postman, or maybe your own, uh, you know, HTTP application from where we can make a request. REST API call that you can make it. From where you can consume this model, enable you to leverage the generative AI model in your own application. Coding against as your open AI. Uh, you know, it's possible by using uh, Python's or by using C sharp, as I said before also. OK, so now what we are going to do, I will go and see that, you know, how we can do the same things with the help of writing a code. That is what we are going to go and do it right away. So if I go to my console. If I go and create a MKDR. And I would go and create maybe .NET. I will be using a C sharp code to make a call to a model that we have deployed already. So I can say .NET new console applications. I'm giving a name my Open AI uh, Open AI client. 
something like this. This is my OpenAI client written in C sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get a, a project there. So I go there. I can open it in Visual Studio Code. This is my program file. So as of now, nothing has come in that project file. But what we need to do, we need to add a package. That is Azure AI.OpenAI. So I can just go and do that. So .NET add package as your open AI dot. This is the .NET SDK that the developer will be using to call a model from their code. So I'm just using a pre-release version of Azure.AI dot open AI. It's perfectly fine. So whatever the latest things they will install, although I'm seeing pre-release, so it will always put the latest versions into and then we can go and say a dot net restore. To get everything up to date. Then we can go and write the code. You know, so that is something that we will be doing at this moment. So if I go to the code that I want to bring in here. The code goes like this. So first two, I have to go and get the endpoint and the key of my open AI resources. That is the first thing that we have to do, but we are getting it from the environmental variable. So if I go to my ENV environmental variables, if I have something, I'll just delete those existing keys. Okay, so let me a lot of environmental variables out there. So I just change this. Now I can go with this environmental variable by getting those information. So let me go to Azure. And uh, key and endpoint from this resources that we have deployed some time back. OK. So I get this endpoint. I can copy this endpoint. And uh, yeah, I can go and write this. Command, so I'll go and get the endpoint now. I copied this endpoint. Paste it here. That is the endpoint. It is successfully saved there. We'll check in some time from now. Then the key that we have to do. So I'll go and get the key also. I copied the key, the first primary key. There are two key. I can use one of them. If I lose one, the other can be used to make a call to this resource. Because it's a key driven. So all is being done. If I go and check this. Environmental variable. And we can see both is being registered in the environmental variable, so I have to exit that to just to get effect. That that one. Then I go again. Command prompt to the same location.
All right, so this is my files. I open this. We are ready to go. So this two command will get this two information from the environmental variable just now we set. Then here we are going, it says. The prompt that we are talking about, this is the system one. This is something to do with. Uh, ZPT 34 Turbo. That is what uh, we have at this moment and we have to give a name, not the model name. So I can go to the. Uh, I can go to my. Deployment. So this is the model name. I just go and put that model name, not the uh, that that deployment name, not the model name, because we are using that model. Uh, GPT Turbo that is all about dealing with. Uh, interactive one. Yes, we can always put the key into the key vault. Then you have to use incorporate the SDK to access the key vault. Because uh, then you have to write a whole lot of programming. And then you have to work with the managed identities and so on and so forth. Yes, you can always extend your code to put this key rather than keeping somewhere in the config files or maybe app.config or app setting.jsons or maybe embedded code. You can always put it into a key wall. But remember that once you put it in key wall, you need to know the consequences also because your product programming model is going to be changed. Uh, then then you have to write the key wall SDK to read the key from the key wall by producing a managed identity service principle. Uh, if you know how to access the key vault and so on and so forth. So I can just remove this previous. OK, so I'm trying to create an interactive chat and I'm asking a question. Does the Azure OpenAI support customer minus keys? Something like this. And this is the system that I'm giving an additional input so that will Always keep in mind by this particular model before they answer the uh, the questions. OK. Maximum token, we put it in 100. Look at the programming model. OK, so what call that we are making at this moment? It is all about get chat completions. That is what the programming model as a developer need to learn, whether it is a Python or a C sharp. The, the the it's all about the functions. It's all about the class. So we are getting a type. It's called chat completions where I'm going to hold the response. By implementing the models that we have deployed under the resources. And we have a callback one that is the chat completion options. I can do it, but whatever the response that we get so we can just print them into the console. It's a very basic minimum stuff that what we are doing at this moment, but yes. You can rightly see. How this is being. So it's pretty simple. You are creating an open AI client like any programming model. Suppose you are talking to any Azure service. You have to create a client object. Always. That is the practice that we have been doing. You always go and create a client object and client object would be created based on the two informations endpoint and the key. So you are about to talk to the API. So but programmatically you can only talk to the API by creating a client object. But we have to specify in the client. So what I'm trying to do, what is my requirement that goes as a message? as a prompt with all the parameters that we want to specify. Right, so that is what. We are basically working with this one. This is the options that we made it on the top and it is gone at the time of calling that particular API with that model that we deploy. So it's a model name, 
not the actual model that we would be uh, using internally. So it's a deployment name that we have to give to get what we are expecting to get from this uh, output. From this answer to this query, so I go and say dot net build again. OK, build succeed. There are a couple of warning because of uh, the API version. That's perfectly fine. So I go and dot net uh, what do you call run. Yes, so the question was something like you can see what was the questions. It said does Azure OpenAI support the customer managed key? So you'd say yes, as your open AI support the customer managed key, you can use the Azure key vault to store uh, and uh, manage the key that are used to encrypt and decrypt data for uh, for your open AI resources. You can then control access to the key by using fine grain access policies. This allow you to maintain the control over the encryptions key and ensure that only authorized user and the app, you know, Applications can access them. It's a beautifully given out there in the managed keys, what they're talking about. The managed keys in the context of Azure ecosystem would be a key vault only. All right, so this is something that we can programmatically do it. And in fact, if I go to my coach, uh, the, the studio again, if I uh, go to my uh, deployment there. So this was my. I'm bringing it to this. Now, whatever we have done so far, whatever we have set the system whatever we are seeing and now I want to quickly deploy this model to an web application. The web application deployed in my so I can say open AI web application client. This is what I just put. That is the name of my web application that I want to create and deploy under my subscription. Resource group. This is the resource group that we have created. Only we have deployed that OpenAI resources. I'll go to the same locations. And service plan, I will go with the standard S1. And then I go and deploy this. So deployment is getting started. So what we are essentially doing it. So it means I will be given a ready-made web application from where I can use this model. That is something that we are going to get in some time from now. And we'll go and explore that because this is the capabilities of uh, the Azure AI Studio, what we are looking at at this moment. So this capability will, of course, would be used to test it something from the Azure. And after that, you can always go and code behind and we can always go and uh, sort of uh, 
modify the code and the UI that is given by default. Uh, to test my model from a web client, web applications client. The last time we did it from the console application. You know, this is the console application that we are building, but we have seen the programming model, how we can write a code in order to call a model that is being deployed under a particular resource, which is being incorporated with the help of keys and the endpoints where it is getting deployed and so on and so forth. OK, and programming model is pretty simple. As we say that, you know, this is something that is more important because how you want to send a message, what you want to send, the other parameters that you want to send along with like temperature and max token and so on and so forth, whatever the parameters that you can use along with the request that you would be made, we would be making, uh, you know, to, to the underlying API. So let me go back and see it. Uh, its deployment is still going at, but at this moment we can go back and validate uh, that uh, by going into the resource group. That is the resource group. Yes, we got this web application. Right, so that is the web applications as of now that we can see it. So still the deployment is uh, going on. OK, so once the deployment is succeed, so we can browse this web applications. In the meantime, I can go to tools like advanced tools. to see what is being deployed so far. OK, so this is what basically all. We are given out there. So you can deployment files or whatever we can go back and see this. So if I want to go to the WW root, so we are going to get some kind of XML. It is not yet come. The whole content from where we are going to go and make it happen. So it's so back and still going in deployment. So once we deploy, then we can go to the back end and we can check what application is being deployed. But in a few minutes, we should be able to run this application till then. OK, so you can explore. Uh, the other details like other details in the sense like we are not going to go and do uh, more. Uh, a deployment of a model because the pattern is the same. So you can keep testing them uh, one after another, but only in a process you just need to go to the documentations and, and you need to know what for. Your model is going to be used so on and so forth. Uh, we can deploy any applications means what do we mean by that at this moment as your uh, AI Studio will deploy a web application to the app service plan. OK, so that is what you are. I mean, like HTML based application will be deployed into an app app service plan. But if you want to write your own application, you can always go and write your application using C Sharp or Python you know, uh, and or JavaScript. So you just need to check what are the language now SDK is being made available. So you can use C sharp, you can use Java, you can use JavaScript, you can use Python, you can use REST API. You can always use all the language to develop your application and deploy it in app service plan with your own code. But this is just a 
you know, integrated template through which you can get a flavor of calling a model from a full fledged application that is being deployed on the cloud. That is what uh, you know, this particular option is trying to uh, demonstrate at this moment. Nothing more than that. OK, but in productions in your own thing, so you always need to go back and create. You need to always go back and create your own. Uh, what you call? Yeah, so you can see this is being deployed. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> OK, now we can go and check this web applications going into web applications and try and browse this. So. OK, so it will take some time, so it will have this deployed in last 10 minutes and please wait to upload this in. So we'll come back in 10 minutes and check it because internally they have to go and set up uh, the RBAC and authentications with the help of Azure Active Directory. So that is not yet done in comp. So it will take time. Only the deployment is being done, but other configuration is yet to be done to call this application from the outside world. But yes, you can always browse in some time from now. OK. So with that, so what we did so far, the three things, core important things, what we have learned so far. Now, what is Azure Open AI as a service? It is almost like any other service that we have used from the Microsoft Azure. But the capabilities of Open AI is being driven by those models, which has come from the Open AI, not from the Microsoft, because Microsoft has tie up with the business partner with the open AI to get their technology and consume from their services. From their resources, that is what we have learned and the whole process, how we can deploy, how we can test, how we can make use of a particular model. How we can consume it from the development point of view by using an SDK and how we can consume from a, a template which is associated with the. The playground of the Azure AI Studio. And learning an AI Studio to test your things and then go back to the real implementations with your real applications. OK, so that is the core things that we need to discuss and we need to. Uh, understand. And as far as the Azure is concerned, as I said, it is pretty simple to go and work with Microsoft Azure, and that is the simplicity uh, that you know uh, the Microsoft is trying to bring uh, in front of the customers, because the Microsoft is already running on the robust platforms. You know, Microsoft already running with the related related services in the field of AI, so for them it become easy to jump into an open AI and make use of the capability of open AI every now and then. OK, so let me go to the presentations, few more uh, presentations that I just need to. Walk you through. Now customer momentum has already started consuming an open AI. You know, it's not like. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it is only talk, but the people already started using OpenAI in their product. The moment it was introduced with Microsoft Azure. 
the momentum, as you can see, list of customer who started using OpenAI in their product. It become easy because they are the Azure customers, existing customers, and they are just extending their, uh, you know, uh, consumptions by adding, by subscribing uh, the OpenAI as a service. So as your OpenAI considerations, I need a general purpose model that can handle multiple tasks. Translations plus entity recognition, sentiment analysis, and so on and so forth. I need to generate the human-like content. Preserving the data privacy and security, I need a rapid prototyping and quick time to market for many use cases. I could use a model with a little or no training. I want to explore a solutions use cases that have been already described uh, uh, in the previous conversations what we did. <clears throat> right, so this is a set of Azure AI cognitive service. The open AI is sitting in between. So when you talk about the key takeaway or as your open AI for all the enterprise, the key takeaway is this one security and data privacy. As your open AI enterprise security are back role based access control and customer managed key that is key wall. Compliance. In case of open AI, if you use without a Microsoft open AI, so what are the problem that you are going to face? But on the uh, on the Microsoft Cloud platform. OK, so I'll be walking you through with a few use cases at the end. So enterprise securities, uh, SOC and, and these are HIPAA and CSA and STAR and these are ISO. These are kind of compliance the Microsoft Azure have. OK, but uh, OpenAI is going to get a limited one. Reliabilities as your SLA is there, service level agreement would be there. Dedicated. Capacity options also there. Responsible AI separate safety classifier but here it's built in enterprise get low latency moderations and the harm preventions holistic solutions advanced llm and the large generation uh, or maybe basic speeds here open ai model complete ai solutions and complete pass platform as a service so we don't have to manage any infrastructure and these are the region at this moment as of March 23, but uh, you know it would be adding more uh, the regions because we know that the service cannot be made available all the regions all over the world at the same time. There would be a cost of infrastructure. There would be a cost of uh, other uh, logistics also at the same time, but eventually, uh, but the Microsoft will make uh, this service OpenAI service uh, uh, in most of the regions, so we can go up to that region and start using them, of course. So final. What? Open AI is going to deliver at the end, so this is something that we can see increase the efficiency and productivity by getting more. Done in the lesser time enough. Rapid prototyping and quicker time to the market. So these are the few things, the conclusion. By having open AI from the Microsoft Azure, so why do I have to go? What benefits that I'm going to get at the end of the day? I think these are the benefits, enterprise level benefit that you are going to get. Right, so it said the ability to perform the text analytics and generation tasks that up till now were the reserve only to humans. So taking over those tasks from the human is the 
objective and maintaining the accuracy at the same time because it has to be accurate. OK, so this is what API key, how we can make a request like from the HTTP request that we can make it something like this, which we have already discussed. How it will go from to say temperature token. You know, top piece frequency, you will get to know all these parameters. So what what are the parameters that we can talk about? So what models ID is a model of use the prompt. Maximum token, maximum number of token to generate temperatures, what we have already discussed, top P, an alternative to sampling with a temperature called the nucleus sampling, where the model consider the result of the token with top P probability mass. This is something related with the machine learning and statistical. How many completion to generate for each prompt? So you have to spend some time to know all the parameters in detail. You know, so how your model is going to be controlled by setting uh, a value to control those parameters. OK, so. So this is how it is going to go with. So parameters also, this is how. When you make a call to this open AI and what we get in response anyway. So these are the few things again that you know uh, how we can make call by using curl command. So this is what the deployment categories, examples and so on and so forth. So you can just see that because more controlling from the REST API point of view. I'm just walking you through just to make you familiar with this. Because it is all about interacting with your open AI APIs uh, from the restfulness behavior or maybe you know how restfully you can make a call. Uh, by using a call command with the help of endpoints. Endpoints means already we saw the endpoints of the resources that we have created and the key and so on and so forth. So finally, uh, we are going to go and talk about bit of use cases. So this is the Microsoft ecosystems. Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Power Platform Security, Microsoft Security, and uh, GitHub. So these are the very uh, common uh, kind of, uh, yeah, I mean. And coming back to the unlock the new use cases like government agency using open AI service to extract and summarize the key information from their extensive library of rural development report. Financial service using as your open AI service to summarize the financial report for. You know peer risk analysis and customer conservation summarizations. Code generations artifact companies using. Uh, to convert the natural language to SQL for uh, aircraft uh, telemetry data. Consulting service using Azure OpenAI service to convert the natural language to query uh, the property data models. Financial service firms using Azure OpenAI service to improve the search capabilities and conversational qualities of the customer bought experiences. This is where. Uh, you know. Your open AI is being extensively used in the insurance company extract information from the volume of unstructured data to automate the claim handling process right from the image by looking at the image. Uh, you know the automatically it will say the what would be the claim amount. After meeting an accident, you know you need to take a photo and upload to an application. The application itself will calculate the you know compensation that you have to uh, you have to get. 
without any making mistake. We don't have to go human there. The photo is enough. By looking at the photo, how much damage happened to the car? So it will calculate accordingly and uh, you will get the reimbursement for that. International insurance company using open air service to provide the summarized the call center customer support conversation log. Global bank using as your open air service to summarize the financial report and analyst articles. So I think this is what open AI service uh, use cases, the codex, Dell E, the languages, writing assistance, you know, contact centers, summarizations, conversational AI. We have been discussing few of them. But yes, this is what uh, you are going to see, in fact. Uh, OK, so. Smart assist for the call center, which is being implementations, the tech support chatbot or virtual assistant, artificial humans, you know, who will talk to your customers, the end user as a human with a voice. <clears throat> So going to a specific implementation the people has done, what they have to say about uh, the open AI. That's what he said, as your open AI service provide a building block to quickly develop AI solutions that understood the Dutch text. This opened a door to have many others use, uh, you know, user cases. So what it does, so classification of the financial informations and also a programming applications for their community of citizens, scientists. They continue to seek for opportunities to bring such benefit to a support functions colleagues worldwide. So as your open air service has helped to take its digital human offering to a various Azure enabled client easily and help reduce implementation time. Right, so open air for sentiment to increase the empathy of their digital people so that the conversation with the user are deeper and are more meaningful. Or they can emotionally connect with the customers, building solutions with the help of open AI. They also go and use it to spot and as your machine learning studio and as your open AI to foster the personalized employee experience within the organization.
OK, so another sector of an agriculture. Service to gain an understanding of a sentiments around a keyword or a phrases that emerge in the case of logging. Dynamics. So it's a D, V, C and a Q is a highlighted currently trending keys phrases. Prepare the summarize and enable user to drill down and look at the keys or interaction summaries and so on and so forth. So what they say is it saves our call center staff time to improve our customers experience. In terms 